Scooby-Doo is an insanely popular cartoon that needs no introduction. This group of teenagers and their dog have been solving mysteries for over 50 years now with tons of different TV shows and movies. But something that's caught my attention is that Scooby-Doo has been getting video games made off it for 40 years now, and I never see people talk about any of these. Sure, Shaggy is in multiverses and he was also in Lego Dimensions, but I mean true Scooby-Doo video games. And with a franchise with such a loyal fanbase, it's bound to have some good games, like Spongebob for example. So today, I'm going to play and review every single Scooby-Doo video game. Well, except for crossover games and the endless supply of PC games. Mostly because most of them are just point and click adventure games and it would be awful to try and track down and play all those games. So that leads me to 23 games. Oh boy. Also, before I start things off, for most of these games, I will be playing the first couple of hours and nothing more. Only because this is a lot of games for just one video. And as you will see, it's hard to want to play most of these games for more than half an hour. So let's see if we can solve the mystery. Are there any good Scooby-Doo video games? The very first video game we got based on Scooby-Doo was Scooby-Doo Maze Chase, released in 1983 for the Intellivision. Well scratch that, now I'm only playing 22 games for this video. Yeah, unfortunately, I cannot play this game. I tried it in multiple emulators and it would just never work. I looked it up online and saw a couple posts saying that this game is impossible to play via emulation. So that means the only way to play this game is by owning an Intellivision. And trust me, I don't want to own an Intellivision just to play Scooby-Doo Maze Chase. The best I can do is show you someone else's footage of the game. The gameplay speaks for itself. By the looks of it, the game is just a simple game where you're Scooby in a maze and you eat ghosts. The only thing this game is really known for is being the first Scooby-Doo game and nothing else. So maybe the second game can actually be something exciting. In the 1980s, Dragon Lair was extremely popular and such a cool way of combining animation with video games at the time. So Elite Systems thought, hey, we should do that with Scooby-Doo. The game was titled Scooby-Doo and the Castle Mystery, and it was hyped up like it was the second coming of Christ, saying it was going to be like nothing you've ever seen before on any 8-bit console. They were very confident that they were going to make a big game with what little memory they already had. But as time went on, Elite thought it was too much too soon, and scrapped the project. There are a couple photos of this game out in the wild, and some people even think that there was at one point a playable build, but this is unconfirmed. With how expensive all the advertising for this game was, they couldn't just release nothing. So Gargoyle Games was drafted to quickly make a Scooby-Doo game. The game would be released in 1986 for the ZX Spectrum, simply titled Scooby-Doo. While the original plan for the game was for it to be a huge adventure game where you solve a mystery, that was all scrapped for a much simpler platformer. This whole game is made entirely out of yellow, and god it makes it so hard to look at. So all you do in this game is run around, climb ladders, do some light platforming, and fight off ghosts. If you get touched by a ghost even a tiny bit, you are dead, but you respawn right where you last were. I don't really know what to say about this game, it's pretty self explanatory. What you see is what you get, and as you can see, this game is a simple high score based game. There isn't much to it. The next game based on Scooby Doo wasn't released until 1991 by PAL Developments. It was called Scooby Doo and Scrappy Doo, and it released for the Amiga, Amstrada CPC, Atari ST, Commodore 64, and the ZX Spectrum. From what I could find online, the differences for these games depend on what console you're playing it on. Of course, the biggest difference for most of these is the graphics, but if you're playing in the Amiga or Atari ST, you have 9 levels, while on all the other consoles you only get 4. So I played this game on the Atari ST. And oh man, look at this title screen. That's how you know it's about to be a good time. In the game, we play as Scrappy-Doo. It's just a simple side-scrolling platformer. Most of the levels are extremely annoying to navigate, and it kind of feels like a labyrinth. Scrappy's attack is super short as well. You would be lucky if you could hit anything at all. It's hard to tell the difference of what I can or can't jump on. And because of the camera, you can't really see what enemies or platforms are ahead of you. The gameplay is pretty basic. Just your standard platformer with nothing all that special to say. Also, I have no clue why Scrappy and Scooby's heads, as long as the title, can be seen throughout the whole gameplay. It's like they think I might forget the game I'm playing. One of the later stages in this game is a volcano, and one of my first thoughts was, this reminds me of hell. And while exploring the level, I actually found hell. So now we all at least know what happened to Scrappy-Doo after he was found dead in Miami. But anyways, yeah, I don't have a lot to say about this game either, other than it exists. I'm still waiting for that true console experience, something that was released on a platform that everyone remembers. So that's where Scooby-Doo Mystery comes in, leasing in 1995 for the SNES and Sega Genesis. The SNES version was developed by Ergonaut Software, 
while the Sega Genesis was developed by Illusions Gaming Company. Despite sharing the same title, these are both completely different games. So I'll look at the SNES version first. While writing the script, I was gonna go look for my SNES footage, and for some reason all of it got corrupted. So after spending two hours of playing the game, I didn't want to replay the game again, so I'll be using someone else's footage for the video. You get a cutscene at the start of the game. The gang is all heading to their destination and talking about their plan. Then they get to the location, and we get some dialogue between everyone. After that, the game finally starts. You play as Scooby and Shaggy and have to explore these pretty big areas. Don't worry, you get a map which can help you find out where you have or haven't been, and also where you are. But still at times, the game's level design feels like a bunch of rooms that look the same just scattered around randomly. You can find lots of items while exploring. You use these items to open doors, solve puzzles, or fight off enemies. Once you find an item, you're encouraged to show it to Velma who can identify if it's a clue or not. If you find a clue, you get to move on to the next area. If not, you just have to keep looking. You will do a lot of backtracking in this game, especially because sometimes it is very unclear on what I'm actually supposed to be doing. The gameplay loop gets stale really fast. Find a bunch of items in your area, go to Velma, have her check all your items, then rinse and repeat for the next room. Sometimes the game tries to throw in platforming into the mix, and oh god, these are probably what made me dislike this game. The platforming feels awful. Shaggy and Scooby are very slippery to control, and for some reason you take fall damage. So when you die because of platforming, you must restart the whole thing again. So with tedious gameplay and awful platforming, it's hard to get this game a pass. I will say it has some decent visuals, but this game released in 1995. The N64 will literally come out a year after. I'm interested to see if the Sega Genesis version can be any better. Starting things off, this game has way better cutscenes. I mean, look at this. This is pretty impressive for the Sega Genesis. Although Velma looks terrified, and I'm not surprised because just look at the way Daphne talks. This game's graphics are really nice. There is so much going on in these backgrounds, and yet they still manage to keep the characters to be so recognizable. The game is a point-and-click adventure game. I'm not really into this genre, but I think it fits perfectly with the Scooby-Doo franchise. The gameplay consists of walking around and interacting with different objects, using items you've collected on different objects, and talking to people. But first, I have to get the controls out of the way, because they're not great. Just look at all the options you have to select at the bottom of the screen. You can control Shaggy using the D-pad, but to interact with objects or the environment, you tap a button that pops up a cursor. So if you want to use an item on something in the background, first you must click the Use option, then click what item you want to use, and then click on the thing in the background. This process is very slow, and most of the time leads to Shaggy telling me he just can't even do it in the first place. You do this with almost everything you want to interact with, and when I get lost and don't know what to do next, I'm just trying the most random things to see if they'll work. Like in all honesty, this game is pretty fun, and it's so cool trying to solve the mystery yourself. But it's really held back by the controls. I was able to actually beat this game's first story. This game has two stories to play through, which is pretty cool. Honestly, this game is ambitious as hell and I would recommend trying it out if you're a fan of point and click games or just Scooby-Doo. As long as you can get passing controls, it's a really fun time. Remember how I mentioned that the N64 would come out a year after this game's release? Well, we wouldn't get a Scooby-Doo game on that system until 2000. Yeah, they really took their time with this one. This game was called Scooby-Doo Classic Creep Capers, and it released for the N64 and Game Boy Color. The N64 version was developed by Terraglyphy Interactive, I think that's how you pronounce it. Well, the Game Boy Color version was done by Digital Eclipse Software. Again, I'm just gonna start off with the console version. Right after the first cutscene, we take control of Shaggy and Scooby. This is the first 3D Scooby-Doo game, and it really shows. You walk around these boring environments, avoiding obstacles. The camera is stuck in a fixed position and will only change if you get to another area. The game kind of plays like the SNES one, where you find clues lying around and have to show them to your team to progress. But I don't know, this game was really boring to me. I can only play this game for about 10 minutes. Like, the game is fine, I just wouldn't recommend you played it. There isn't much to talk about. Like, sure, you can yell at me all you want that I didn't give this game enough time, but you try and play it and come back to me. So anyways, this game also has the honor of being the first handheld Scooby-Doo game, so let's see how the Game Boy Color handled this game. And shocking to say, this game is more similar to the Sega Genesis game I just covered. Starting up the game, I already really enjoy it. Just listen to the Scooby-Doo game on this thing. There's even a lot of nice pixel cutscenes. This game honestly looks great. It might shock some people, but this game controls way better than the Sega Genesis version, despite only having two buttons on the Game Boy Color. On the bottom of the screen, you see what items you're about to interact with. You have three options. Look at, 
grab, or talk to. It controls a lot better than how it sounds, and I'm shocked they got a game like this to control so well. The items also make a return, and serve the same function as they did in the Genesis game. Just this time it's a lot better because of the controls. In this game, you play the whole game. You are constantly switching between them because only certain characters can do certain things. Like Velma being able to read symbols. It's awesome that you can finally play as someone other than Shaggy and Scooby. But not only that, it's incorporated into the gameplay so well. Like at one point in the game, one of the characters gets captured and you can still control them in the cell. You can't do much, but it's such a stupid detail and I love it. The game doesn't take too long to beat if you know where everything is, but it took me about two and a half hours. And I loved the whole thing. Sometimes it can be a bit annoying trying to figure out what I need to do next, but a lot of games like this have that issue. Not to mention, the game's atmosphere and graphics are great, especially on the Game Boy Color. It's genuinely a really fun time and definitely my favorite so far out of any of these games. I would recommend it to most people, honestly. It's super short but has a lot of charm. Maybe some of you are thinking right now, I'm tired of hearing only about cartridge games. Where are all the disc-based consoles at? Well, we wouldn't get that until a year later in 2001, called Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase. Obviously based off the animated direct-to-video film that released the same year. It would release on the PS1 and GBA. The PS1 version was developed by Artco, while the GBA version was done by Software Creations. Again, I'll start off with the console version, then move on to the handheld. The game is a Crash Bandicoot clone, so just imagine Crash Bandicoot but 10 times slower and harder to control, with boring level designs and having to stop every couple of seconds just to defeat an enemy. If you can't already tell, this game is bad. It feels awful to control, and the levels are some of the most uninspired and lifeless I have ever played. The goal was literally just move forward. Do that of two stages, then do a boss fight. It's mind-numbingly boring. These stages as well have the most basic environments, like snow or temple. There isn't anything else I can really say about this game. I mean, you can see it here. Like, I'm sorry, but when a game is boring, I'd rather not waste my time with it. Let's hope that the GBA version of this game is better. For some reason, the game starts off with a big chunk of text with just a PC in the background to tell you the story, but once you're into the actual game, you control the whole game with this really annoying looping music in the background. You can't really do much except for enter some rooms. It took me a while to find out that this is actually the hub. What you're supposed to do is find CDs and then go over to the machine that'll bring you into the level selection screen. The levels here are really boring. First off, they are way bigger than what they need to be, which most of the time leads me to wandering around for ages. You also have to deal with crappy platforming and annoying enemies as well. So it's like the console version and the level environments are also extremely uninspired and boring. Again, I'm finding it hard on things to say about this game. It's just a tie-in game quickly made to cash in on the movie. The second level of this game is a jet ski section that is awful to control. And if you make it to the end of the section without collecting enough Scooby snacks, you have to restart the whole thing. But if you can make it past that level, it's back to the more same bland and boring level design. There's nothing else I have to say about this game. And so far, I'm 9 games in and I've only found 2 good ones. On the right side, for the next game, I get to talk about the Scooby-Doo live action movie. So for some reason, the Scooby-Doo film that released only had one tie-in game made for it. And it was on the GBA. Well, there is a PC version, but I'm not going to discuss PC games. The GBA game released in 2002, developed by Helix. And oh my god, this game is extremely boring. I know it feels like I've said the word boring like a thousand times in this video, but I mean this game is really boring boring. It's in an isometric angle and you just wander around this awful looking area talking to random NPCs. But oh, when Shaggy talks to you, it's terrifying. Why does he look like that? What What is he thinking? Anyways, all the characters are completely unrecognizable because how far away everything is. Just look at Scooby. You also move at a snail's pace and this game doesn't feel like a game. It feels more like a walking simulator where you just go around and talk with people. Just it happens to be based off the Scooby-Doo 2002 movie. The only good thing about this game is the character portraits that pop up when you talk to people. Like, I think I'd be terrified if I found someone that had a Twitter profile that was this. But yeah, don't play this game unless you want to be bored to death. It doesn't do the Scooby-Doo movie justice. But released in the same year, we have Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights. It released on the PS2, GameCube, and Xbox. And oh my god, finally! I think we actually have a confident game here. Which is unsurprising because it came from Heavy Iron Studios. Yes, the same people that develop Battle for the Bikini Bottom. Starting things off, the cutscenes are probably some of the best we've had in any of these games. At least when it comes to the 3D ones. They bring the vibe from the classic cartoon so well, even including the laugh track. Jumbo Shrimp! Runa Sushi! <laughs> Alright you two, don't forget the real reason we're here.
In this game, you play as Scooby and explore multiple areas outside and inside the Haunted Mansion. The game controls great and consists of a lot of platforming, but one of my favorite things about this game is the collect-a-thon aspect of it. In each area, you can collect a certain amount of Scooby-Doo snacks, which you can track by pausing the game. Collecting these is really addicting. Also, as you progress more and more in each area, you unlock different abilities. A lot of these different abilities will be used for puzzle solving. But, not to mention, you can go back in older areas and use these abilities to find secrets or collectibles you previously couldn't get. The game has a spooky atmosphere that'll bring you right back to the classic show. The environments all stand out from each other, with my personal favorite definitely being the mansion itself. The camera is constantly changing, sometimes it can be behind you, and other times it can be like a 2.5D platformer. I was only going to play this game for a couple of hours, but it's really addicting to just keep exploring. There aren't really levels in this game, instead you just explore more and more areas around the mansion. It's fun unlocking new areas, and seeing all the things to explore and finding out what new ability you'll get. The game isn't really challenging at all, it's honestly a great shut your brain off type of game that'll glue you in. All the sound effects and everything just makes this game feel like you're playing through one of the episodes of the older show, and gives this game such a charm. There's a lot of care put into this game, and I really recommend it to anyone who likes platformers or even Spongebob Battle for the Bikini Bottom. Heavy Iron Studios has done a great job at making great 3D platformers for animated TV shows. Unfortunately, since I have a lot more games to talk about, I couldn't play the whole game, but I definitely think I'll go around to completing it on my own time. So sadly, it's time to move on. The next game would be Scooby-Doo Mystery Mayhem, and it wouldn't release until 2004 for the GameCube, Xbox, PS2, and Game Boy Advance. Starting with the PS2 version, the game starts you off with a cutscene, obviously. I just feel like I've seen this shot of them all in the car a lot today. The character models in this game look a lot uglier than the last game I just checked out. Yet again, you play as Scooby and Shaggy, but this time you can switch between them, although there isn't any reason to it because they do the same thing. In the game, you'll just be exploring rooms, solving puzzles, or fighting off ghosts like you're in Luigi's Mansion. The puzzles in this game are extremely mindless, and it doesn't help that the environments and levels feel extremely boring. The whole first level is just a library, and almost every room looks exactly the same. You will be encouraged to sneak around ghosts or get into disguise to avoid them, but there isn't any reason to do this, because they aren't that much of a threat, and you can just suck them up anyway. You can also find clues in the levels, but these are just collectibles, nothing more. Also, in these hallway sections, they have these tall, shadow monsters that really disturbed me. I don't know what it is, but it just makes me feel really uncomfortable. Also, anytime you lose all your health, Shaggy and Scooby will get spooked, and will run around making it hard for you to control them. It's kind of a cool feature, but at the end of the day, this game is pretty harmless, just really boring. It's not a bad game, it's just very meh. So I don't really have high expectations for the GBA version. And would it surprise you if I told you it was another really basic side-scrolling game? Like, there isn't anything wrong with that, but these all really start to blend into each other, and most of the time are just a simple game with Scooby-Doo paint over it. And I can say that about this game right here. Just another 2D platformer where you control Shaggy and Scooby. There are collectibles and stuff like the console game, but no catching ghosts. It's literally just go from point A to point B, and that's it. Also, the platforming in this game is really annoying because of the small GBA screen, but yeah, I don't have much else to say about this game. Like, trust me, if you've played this game, it's just like the hundreds of other GBA games that were being released at the time. Just to get this out of the way, the next game is also a GBA exclusive game. It is a sequel to the live action movie, Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed. It released in 2004 and was developed by Ultron. I actually owned this game as a kid. I remember never being able to get past the first level, but this game is yet again another 2D side-scrolling platformer. This time with combat thrown into the mix. I will say it feels and plays a lot better than most of the 2D side scrollers, and I'm glad it's not the same as the first movie game on GBA, but it's still pretty boring. All the music in this game makes me feel so nostalgic, but this game isn't good or anything. Hell, on the first level they had this annoying pterodactyl flying around the corner of the screen constantly. I will say the big thing this game is known for is the secret code, so if you've seen the sequel to the live action Scooby Doo, if you stuck around for the credits, you would have seen this post credit scene. Event secret code. <laughs> yes, I know it's amazing, and in even newer releases of this film, this post credit scene still remains. But you cannot use this code until you get to the end of the game. At the end of the game, before you unmask the monster, you'll be asked to input a code. Inputting the wrong code will give you the bad ending, but if you input the code from the film, you will get the good ending. It's such a dumb feature, but I love this strange early 2000s film marketing. Other than that, there isn't much else to say about this game. I will say I think it's odd you only specifically play as Scooby, Shaggy, and Daphne. I guess they just thought Fred and Velma wouldn't be fun to play as. 
was, but it's time to move on. And this next game kind of has a smallish fan base, so I'm ready to get a lot of hate for my opinion on this game. Scooby Doo Unmasked, released in 2005 for the PS2, GameCube, Xbox, GBA, and for the first time ever, the Nintendo DS. This game is another 3D platformer, although I feel like this time around, the game lacks a lot of polish. The camera feels really weird to control, platforming is annoying, but just watch when Scooby does his main attack. He just snaps right to it. Also, this game's color palette is really ugly. Everything is so dark and just unpleasant to look at which just makes all the levels feel bad as well. In this game, you unlock different hub worlds, and in each hub world, you get very long linear missions to go through. In most of the missions, you'll just do platforming or fighting off enemies. But the main gimmick in this game is Scooby-Doo now has multiple suits he can switch between. I didn't play this game long enough to unlock any of the other suits, so enjoy the gameplay of Karate Scoob. I will say I like the idea of it, although it doesn't really feel like a concept that fits well with the Scooby-Doo universe. And this is a pretty common video game trope. From the one suit I unlocked, it doesn't add much to the game. The karate suit just lets you fight enemies and blast some type of special move. And since they give you combat in this game, they expect you to fight these really annoying enemies. When you get into combat scenarios, it's where I started to notice that combat in this game is just an afterthought. I think the game looks ugly, is super boring, and uninspired, and this game could literally be any other game. I'm sorry for fans of this game, but Night of 100 Fights is still staying at the top when it comes to 3D platforming Scooby-Doo games. But hey, I'm excited to check out the first DS game for the Scooby-Doo franchise. This game is a 2D side-scroller, and honestly, a lot worse than the console version, or most of the games I've played in this video. The only thing in your way is like platforming and puzzle solving. The game is way worse than any of the GBA games. Like in the GBA games, you didn't always go straight. Sometimes you could go up or down, or even backwards. But in this game, you literally only will move in the same direction. Sure, the GBA games, most levels are really annoying to get through, but this game feels way too basic and slow. Obviously, the suit mechanic is here as well. It's the same as a console version, but I was actually able to get another suit. It's the scientist suit, but it really sucks. He literally will just walk and can't fight enemies. It's only there so you can do some touchscreen minigames when you have blue jello in your way. This game made me want to fall asleep. It's so boring and easy. There is nothing to this game at all. It feels like it's made for like four year olds. So I'm just gonna move on and hope for the best for the GBA version. Honestly, the GBA version is probably the best version of this game. Sure, it's another 2D side scroller, but it actually plays really nice and the graphics are the best I've seen for a Scooby-Doo game on GBA. Trust me, it's not groundbreaking in any way, but it's definitely better than the first two. This one feels more like an actual video game, while the other two bored me to death. The combat and platforming for levels is really fast paced and fun at times, but that's all I really have to say. I only have six more games, so please let me move on. This is the most Scooby-Doo I've ever had in my life. The next game is actually a portable exclusive releasing for the PSP and DS, which makes this game the first and last Scooby-Doo game to ever be on the PSP. So something really cool about this game is that it's a 3D platformer, and honestly it's done a better job at doing that compared to most of the recent ones. You start off in the hub world area, and can choose to start three levels in any order you want. All three of the levels are different from each other. You always have a huge open world level that's pretty fun to explore with some platforming, a vehicle level, and then the last one will be a chase section, where you're just being chased by the monster and have to outrun him. I will say despite not having a second analog stick, the game controls so much better than the previous 3D Scooby-Doo games. I love the huge free roam levels where your main objective is to just find the collectibles. The other two sections are okay, I'm not really a car person and the chasing sections are just kind of boring, but this game has multiple hub worlds and with each one having three levels in it. Honestly, this game is really fun. I would say my main complaints would have to be the enemies, because once I hit you, you go flying, the random lag spikes, and the game does get a bit stale after a while. But so far, this game is in second place when it comes to 3D platforming Scooby-Doo games. I was shocked this game was really well made, so hopefully you can also redeem the DS as a good console for Scooby-Doo games. Here, I'll show you some gameplay for the game and let you try and guess what that answer is. What the hell is this game? Why does it feel so cheap? Like it looks like everyone is made out of paper. So this game is a 2D looking game with a fixed camera angle, but it allows for 3D movement. So it feels and looks all wonky. The platforming in this game is 
awful, it looks awful, plays awful, and honestly, I wish I didn't know about this game's existence. It'll make you want to fall asleep, and I really want to move on to the next game so I can never think about this game ever again. The next game is Scooby-Doo First Frights. It released in 2009 for the PS2, Wii, and Nintendo DS. I'm so tired of Scooby-Doo, so I'm just gonna hope this game is good. For some reason, this game has you play as kid versions of the game, but all of their voices are still the same. Moving on to the actual game itself, it's just a 3D beat-em-up. Something really similar to TT's LEGO games. You play through linear levels as two characters that are decently long and can break objects in the environment to get Scooby snacks. You'll be puzzle solving sometimes by switching characters, doing platformings, or using character exclusive abilities. And honestly, this game is a pretty fun time. It's very different from all the other Scooby-Doo games. Although I will say it doesn't fit Scooby-Doo all that well, and honestly it's very basic. The game can be fun though, especially since it's all about playing with a friend. I'm not sure if this game was trying to cash in on how very successful the LEGO game formula was but it's very similar to that, just a lot more dumbed down and with a lot less features. You like you have a shop in this game where you can buy costumes and previous monsters you fought in the past, but there isn't that many things to buy. The game even lets you go back and play the levels in something that's more similar to the free play mode. In this mode, you can switch between any character or costume you want at any time. The costumes do give characters different abilities, and it's insanely cool being able to play as the monsters. The levels in this game are a lot of fun as well, but do get a bit boring after an hour. Like this game is pretty decent, just Scooby Doo did not need to be involved. I don't have much else to say really, it's a pretty confident game, but it doesn't do anything good enough to make it amazing. It's just a simple game to shut your brain off to, and that's okay. But I am so terrified to play the DS version. Those so far have been the most boring and lifeless games. So let's take a look. Hold on a second. This is exactly the same game. Like, beat for beat, the same game. Obviously, the graphic quality won't be the same, but literally this is the exact same game as the PS2 version. Same unlockables and everything. This is shocking. I've never seen a DS version of a game literally be the exact same game. Sure, sometimes they can be similar, like with the LEGO games, but they've never been the same game. This is so cool and extremely impressive. I'm glad that I can finally say they made a good DS game, but this is so impressive. They did not need to do this at all, and I praise them for this. Like as a kid, whenever you got a DS game, you always expected the worst. You knew it was going to be nothing like the console version and it was going to be awful. But this game is straight up the console version. Like I can't believe this. They even have multiplayer. But finally, I am on the last two games for today's video. Scooby-Doo First Frights would get a sequel only a year after the first game. This one being called Scooby-Doo in the Spooky Swamp. Yeah, it's a weird title. You wouldn't know it's a sequel to this game unless you actually looked at the box. Despite this game being a sequel, it plays very differently from the first one, and honestly, I think it's a huge improvement. Instead of having levels, this game is more exploration based, now having 4 hub worlds that you can explore and find collectibles in. You do missions in these hub worlds as well, which follow a very linear structure, but can be really fun. Once you complete a level, you even unlock more to the hub world and more collectibles to find. The hub worlds in this game are decently sized and have a lot of different collectibles to find. It's super fun and addictive to try and get everything in one hub world. You can now switch between any character you want anytime now, which can be really fun and add a lot to puzzle solving and exploration. They did get rid of the ability to play as monsters and costumes as well. Now you can customize anyone in the gang anytime you want. I just dressed everyone up as clowns. It is kind of creepy though when switching between different things and just watching the characters go bald for a couple of seconds while it loads. I'm glad this game took the same gameplay style and expanded on it. It's a lot better than the first game, and it's really fun. I would recommend it to people who really need a fun and relaxing couch co-op game. Now, there is no way they are able to cram this whole game into the DS again, right? Well, those madmen, yeah, they did it again. This is insane, like, how do they even do this? It is the exact same game, even having the character customizer and everything. Like, there are little things tweaked about the layout in some areas, but it's not that big of a deal. This is so cool, and I, I don't even know what to say. I'm so shocked they even did this. But yeah, there's not much for me to say about it because it's just the same game. I know it's very weird to think we haven't gotten a full-fledged Scooby-Doo console game since 2010. That is 13 years ago. It's just weird we went from getting one every couple of years since the 80s, but honestly, it's not a big deal. Most of these games were just mediocre or okay at best. Sure, there are maybe like two gems in there, but only having two gems out of 23 games, that's not looking too good. Now you guys are probably waiting for my ranking, so here it is. Cam Review's official Scooby-Doo video game ranking. Starting off in last place, we have Scooby-Doo Who's Watching Who for the Nintendo DS. Then Scooby-Doo Unmasked for the Nintendo DS, Scooby-Doo 2002 for the GBA, Cyber Chase for the GBA, Mystery Mayhem for the GBA, Scooby-Doo Maze Chase, Scooby-Doo for the ZX Spectrum, Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo, Cyber Chase for the PS2, 
Unmasked for the GBA, Classic Creek Capers for the N64, Scooby-Doo Mystery for the SNES, Unmasked for the PS2, Mystery Mayhem for the PS2, First Frights for the PS2 and DS because they're the same game, Spooky Swamp for the PS2 and DS, Scooby-Doo Mystery for the Sega Genesis, Who's Watching Who for the PSP, Classic Cape Creepers for the Game Boy Color, and obviously the best Scooby-Doo game is Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights. So that's it, mystery solved. I think I know why most Scooby-Doo games aren't talked about, because 95% of them are bad. Like I get it, people have nostalgia for these things, but when I first had that question pop into my head, I should have expected this. Do I think Scooby-Doo could work as a video game franchise? Maybe, but most of the games I've talked about, you could have replaced Scooby-Doo with literally anything else and the game would have little to no differences. Most of these games are tie-in games or made because they know a kid will buy anything with Scooby-Doo's face on it. I'm glad I will never have to talk about Scooby-Doo again on this channel. It really took a toll on me consuming so much Scooby-Doo content in such a small amount of time. I never want to see that dog's face ever again. Well, it looks like I won't be avoiding him anytime soon.